Let's talk about that concentration that we certainly have seen play out here in the markets. We are initially we're talking about some concerns, some risks that that might uh, signal here for the broader market. What do you think just about where we are, the current valuations, and whether or not maybe there is too much worry about that narrow concentration? Well, you know, the, you, you never like to see a, a narrow rally. Having said that, uh, you know, this time last year, we had a very similar narrow rally, and yet it kept going for another month and a half, and it really didn't see a pullback until we got to August. Um, but, you know, it, it, one of the things it does tell us is that, you know, in, investors aren't all that confident uh, about anything outside of the AI uh, phenomenon. And we haven't seen the big uh, broadening out of earnings outside of the AI phenomenon. We have this, you know, the people are making the chips, the picks and the shovels uh, are doing well, but it's not, you know, it, it's we're not seeing the end users of these uh, uh, chips uh, really Really, you know, seeing a big increase in earnings, so that's going to be a, a big concern. I mean, the the S and P equal weight, weight index that you guys were talking about, it's down four weeks in a row, while the, while the S and P has been rallying uh, quite nicely. So this divergence is something we do need to be concerned about. You know, uh, yes, maybe it does need to fall a little bit further before it creates some problems, but um, whenever you see a, a narrow market, especially when it's as incredibly narrow as this one is, uh, it does raise some questions. So Matt, what does that tell us about the sixty four? 40 portfolio. And I ask because I'm on the phone with my mom over the weekend talking to her about what she, be, she should be doing with her retirement funds. And I know you're not going to give us investment advice, but when you do have that level of concentration, should you be pouring in more, doubling down, getting in on just tech, or should you be hedging your risks a little bit because concentration could go bad really quickly? Yeah, and one of the things right right now, uh, Matt, is is that we have this this situation where uh, it's interesting. Just in the last week or so, some we heard some people talk about you know using a barbell strategy, which is something we've heard a lot in the past. Uh, but this seems to make a little bit of sense. I mean, these these companies that are uh, you know outperforming so well are making money. I mean, Nvidia uh, is not an expensive stock if you look at it on a, on a long term basis. But you're getting 5% in, in cash right now, which is outperforming, as I just mentioned. I mean, you know, the S&P Equal Weight uh, Index, the Russell 2000, is down on the year. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff in the middle is not acting very well. So why not have, if you're going to be overweighting in those, those, cat, in those big cap names that are doing so well and are, uh, are getting some, some nice earnings, uh, why not have a little bit in cash on the other side uh, for protection if the thing does start to turn down? Matt, when you take a look at what the Fed is going to do next, it's, it's too much influence being placed, or too much emphasis, I should say, being placed on the exact timing from of a, of a Fed rate cut. And ultimately, if we don't get one this year, what's that going to do to investor sentiment, do you think? Well, yeah, that's certainly going to be, I mean, let's say we went to what, expecting seven rate cuts, then down to three, now we're down to one, and, you know, we couldn't even get zero. Uh, that would certainly throw a, a wrench into the works because, I mean, let's face it, the market's trading at 22 times uh, forward earnings for, well, for 2024 and uh, 21 or more than 21 times the next 12 months. So, the, uh, you know, so now we have a situation where the market is expensive, but we don't have ultra low interest rates to kind of uh, justify that big uh, high valuation. So that does create problems. And then the other side, we also have to worry about what happens if they, if they suddenly start to uh, ra uh, cut rates in a meaningful way. Uh, you know, that would, you know, in other words, what reason would they have to cut rates more uh, more quickly? And that would be, of course, if the economy is slowing down. And that's not what we want uh, you know, because that would be a negative impact for earnings and in an expensive market. That's not a that's not a big thing. So we, you know, we're definitely as we move into these summer months, we are, uh, you know, have some concerns out, out there, and that's why I think some uh, a little bit more cash uh, in, in, on hand is, is not a bad is not a bad investment idea. How high does that put the bar then for the next earnings cycle? And is that bar so high that at a certain point these tech companies are not going to be able to keep up with the amount of growth that the street is looking for? That's the big concern. I mean, it is an election year. We know we've got a lot of fiscal uh, uh, stimulus in, in the marketplace, and it's going to be there. It's not like Congress has to pass anything more. They've already they passed it a long time ago, and the administration back end loaded it so so uh, into this year. So we, we, we get some nice uh, liquidity. But earnings, you know, remember, last year the stock market rallied 25 percent on zero earnings growth. So, I mean, you know, if, if we're, and we're already up, you know, so since the beginning of 2023, we've had a 38, 39% rally in, in the S&P 500, and yet the earnings have only grown or expected to grow over the two years, uh, you know, 23 and 24, 
12%. At some point, uh, we have to get a big increase in, sec in the second half. We are looking for you know uh, a nice increase in third, uh, third quarter and fourth quarter, but it's going to have to be even better than the uh, expectations are right now, or, or it's just I just think this evaluation thing is, is going to become a problem. Matt, let, let's talk about what's going on in the rest of the world here and the impact that that could ultimately have on the U.S. markets and, and investors watching this show. When you take a look at what is playing out right now in France, when you take a look even from a geopolitical risk perspective, the latest on the war in Israel, uh, Israel's war with Hamas, what should investors keep in mind here just in terms of the risk that that could ultimately pose here to the global markets and what that could mean to the U.S.? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I say, Shauna, I just really think that the, the, the situation is the, the complacency surrounding these uh, 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 geopolitical risks is, is is awfully high. Again, a lot, some of that has to do with the, the liquidity in, in the marketplace, and the market keeps going higher. Says so I, I can't worry about these things. I mean, let's face it, uh, the, the situation in the Middle East has been going on for seven, seven, eight months now, and it hasn't had an impact. But you know, th th that issue has not stopped escalating. It's only been escalating very gradually, but it keeps escalating. And now we start thinking of thing with uh, in the north of Israel and Hezbollah and the conflicts there. If this becomes a wider, you know, a, a, a wider war, and that it impacts the stock prices, you know, with the Straits of Hormuz shutting down or something like that, you got a big problem. And uh, it's it's. Yeah, I just worry that, and of course, with the thing with France, everybody's saying, don't worry about it. But we've seen what sovereign debt crises have done in the past. So again, with 5% cash, I'm not saying, oh, geez, you should suddenly go to 50% cash or even 20% cash. But, you know, it gives you a little bit easier to sleep at night when you have some of these things going on over there and you're actually paid to wait and actually paid uh, to have a little bit of cash. So raising that level a little bit, I think, is a good idea.